Hello friends and greetings for the day. Welcome back to another tutorial of our software testing bootcamp where we are learning the fundamental concepts of software testing. And as a part of today's tutorial, we are stepping into a all new chapter, which is chapter four, test design techniques. As a part of this chapter, we'll be exploring several techniques like black box testing techniques, white box testing techniques, and in fact, some of the experience based too. But at the same time, we just want to tell you that how exactly you can write the test cases and how these techniques can be helpful to derive minimum number of test cases to support your you know, preparation. But in order to do that, the first topic we'll be getting started with is how to write your test cases, which helps you to understand the set of rules, protocols which are involved in writing proper set of test cases. Let's get started. In order to get started and understand how to write test cases, I'm taking an help of the Excel sheet here, because of course, in an organization, you might be using different set of tools, but the rules, which pretty much remains the same. In order to get started, I'm just using a sample application, which is built here, and uh, I'm just taking a kind of dummy interface that we must have some reference, like a requirement with us in order to write some test cases to refer that. So here I'm having an application called as login page where you have two fields, username and password, and you are pressing OK here. And at the same time, you're also trying to understand that if you press cancel, you can cancel the login screen and continue. Now, what exactly is all about writing test cases or what it takes to write some proper test cases for testing your application? So. First of all, let's understand what are the table which you have to create. So for example, we first of all have a unique identification number for each of the test cases, which enables the test cases to be traceable back to the parent requirement or anything else where you're deriving the test cases from. At the same time, we are also looking forward to understand that there should be always a unique objective identified for every single test case which is written and objectives must describe or outline that what a test case will achieve when executed. Following that, the next thing which we should capture here is the prerequisite, which is any kind of precondition which must be fulfilled in order to run a test case. So prior to that, if there's anything which needs to be performed or fulfilled before running a test case should be called as prerequisite and should be explicitly specified here. Following that, we must need some set of data to be used in order to support our execution. Now, every single step does not really need data, but the steps which would need should certainly be defined exclusively in a particular column so that people know what kind of data are we trying with. The following thing will be the test steps, which is basically to operate or perform the real execution. So the test steps basically are the steps which a user will perform in order to uh, run the test case or in order to validate a particular functionality. At the same time, we'll also be having the expected result being captured from the understanding of the requirement that what should happen if these steps are performed on a particular application with respect to that of the requirement. So here, we're just trying to uh, kind of, you know, understand given this login page, if we have to test this particular uh, login page, how exactly the test cases will be written. So let's get started writing some test cases, but there are some rules which we follow in order to perform these uh, writing skills, right? We call it as three C's concept, right? Three C's concept, which stands for clear, complete, and concise, which pretty much makes one sense that whatever you write here should be understandable by others too, right? Which means clear, being self-explanatory. It's not that you will be always present to tell anyone that what your test cases stands for. So you just make sure that the way you write the test cases, it is understandable by the person who is reading it, not necessarily you should be explaining them that what do you mean by your test case. Complete, it certainly makes sense again that whatever you write should be complete in all the manners, which should not be skipping any important information which a tester should need in order to run the test or validate the execution. Following that, we do have concise, which basically means that while you're trying to complete your test cases, does not mean that you write stories, so you should be very specific and to the point and avoid any unwanted uh, words, unwanted lines, which may not be relevant at all, 
right? For example, if I'm asking you, where are you right now? You shouldn't be starting with a story that I started from my home at this time. I met with a lot of traffic and this, that. No, sorry. My question was, where are you right now? And you should just answer, I'm this place. That's it, right? That's what you mean by saying concise. That is to the point or being specific. Now, we'll try following this particular three C's concept to be applied in our writing skills of test cases. And we'll cross check that if we have followed or not. So let's get started. The very first thing is, of course, while writing test cases on any particular scenario or any particular test condition, you must always start with the happy path, which is the valid scenario or valid test case. Because if the valid test is working fine, then only there is a point of running invalid test cases. If in case the valid is failing, there's no point having the invalid test cases being executed. To just implement this particular context, we make sure we start with the valid test first and then we write any invalid test. So we'll see the example of both of them and write some of the test cases here. So let's give a unique ID to this TC01, which stands for test case 01. If you prefer to use any internal standards of your organization to uh, you define the unique ID of the test case, you can pretty much do that. So the, my first test will be a valid a test so the objective for this would be successful login always remember that what you should write is with respect to what should happen it should never say what should not happen or what is the superstitious thing which is going to happen now what should happen at the end of the day when you perform this test is what your objective is so you are trying to validate that a successful login happens in order to log in, is there a prerequisite? Of course, there could be a prerequisite that you should launch a particular application, right? For example, you can say www.xyz.com is the application where you defined the application like this window. Or you can also say there could be multiple preconditions at points. You can say that launching this particular thing and you must be a registered user on this particular application, right? You must have registered yourself. You must have signed up in order to log in. So whatever is the precondition to perform a particular test case should be mentioned here. On the other hand, I would say that, okay, I would need test data and I would define that here. So for example, if you want ex explicitly, you can mention it for each steps or you can just define it in a particular uh, box and just use it accordingly. So let's do it other way around. Like I'll just start with the test steps here. Now let me just make sure that application still lies here. And I say, so all your steps must be sequenced for sure so that people know that it's like the order of execution is as per the sequence defined. So number one step in order to log in is to enter, right? Username, username as specified. Now if you see here, of course, the first thing what we observe here is that the word enter means the operation, like it's a text box, so you will enter a value. If it is a drop down, you'll select a value. If it is a button, you will click, right? So operation, the action, user action must be here. Then the field has to be specified because there are two text fields. Which field are we talking about? So enter username as specified, but where is specified? Right here. So I can say here that uname or username uh, colon or is equal to whatever you want to define it as. For example, say hello, right? I'll keep my username as hello and just define it here. Similarly for password, I can just define it here that is equal to admin, right? And I have my data ready. Now let's say step two is enter username as specified again. And the step three is gonna be click on login or in my case it is OK button, right? Now, why should I put something in the double quotes while writing? Because if you explicitly want to highlight that there is something which is as a label, you can always say that. For example, you can even say the username in double quotes. And oh, I think I did a mistake here. So it should be password as specified. You can even slightly elaborate it further. I'm not saying you should always be so concise. You can say enter password in the password field as you know specified. So you can be more clear in that context, but there's nothing wrong in saying this. 
as well. Now, coming to the expected result part, you can even concatenate and put a common expected result, like a user's after performing these three steps, what is expected as per the requirement. So when a user goes to the login page, performs these three steps by fulfilling the necessary prerequisite, what should happen? So I can say a concatenated outcome that the user's respective home page must be displayed. But there's another way to write your expected result is that you can write it stepwise outcome. For example, at step one, what should happen? Username should be entered, right? And displayed. Now this makes more sense that uh, each every single step is being verified right here, right? Step two, you can say password should be entered as masked because the password should be entered but should not be displayed. And step three is what you say, user's homepage should be displayed. Now why I'm using the word should be is because we are expecting this to happen. It has not yet happened, right? So it's a future tense that you are predicting that this is what should happen. As you say, what should happen, the words should be used accordingly, that you are expecting that username should be entered password name should be entered, home page should be displayed, right? This is where the expected results are defined as in this particular language. Now, similarly, just to quickly go ahead and try out one of, one of the negative test cases to tell you how to write negative scenario. I'm just using the next case is TC0T, the 02, and I'm saying, should I say it as an unsuccessful login? No, I should be rather be more concise in terms of like, what are you expecting to happen if I try with invalid inputs? So say my objective is error message, right? I'm expecting an error message when try with invalid inputs. So I can quickly concatenate these uh, things for the time being and I'll make the necessary changes where applicable. So the prerequisite which pretty much remains the same is not gonna be uh, different right because you are signed up user or if you want to take up an example where you have not signed up you can just say that you are an unregistered user right unregistered user and then you're trying with anything else then it doesn't work right or say for example you say another scenario is registered user so you can go on writing your different set of scenarios and write different test cases there now instead of saying hello i would say hell right but yeah, again, there could be a number of combina combinations here, like valid username, invalid password, invalid username, valid password, or invalid username, invalid password, or unregistered user trying to log in, right? So all these would be my different test cases lined up below this. So the steps would remain pretty much the same. It's just that this is a negative scenario or negative use case. And here, I would say everything looks again great, because we're just trying to enter the values and the values are wrong, right? All we will have the change in is the step three, because we are not expecting when trying with invalid input that home page should be displayed. Rather, we would say the error message which you are expecting. So define it as what type of message should appear and say uh, error message was the message. The username is incorrect and whatever message you want to print right please try again try again close the quotes because that's what your message is should be displayed now again if there are types involved you always specify what type are you interested in for example the error message can be displayed below the field next to the field above the field in a pop-up window so you can specify that that it should be displayed above the field or say for example right side of the field in red color so everything you know if there are types involved you clearly specify that how you want to see that particular uh, output on your screen and that has to be validated right now this is what my interface or my test cases would look like when I'm writing it for certain scenarios. Now let's come back to this discussion that when we say it's three C's, is it my test case clear? 
Yes, it is very clear. Anybody can understand it. Is it complete? Do you think anything is missing here, which an, a person would need, but probably doesn't have that information on the screen? No. And third one is concise. Do you think there's anything extra which we can remove, which is unnecessarily written? No, again. So the point here is for different types of application, different types of product, you may have different set of test cases which are required to be taken into account. And the steps would also vary according to that. Now, one final thing I want to tell you here that when you are writing test cases, this expected result is your last column. Okay, expected result is your last column. A lot of people may wonder here that isn't that we do have columns like actual result, final status of the test and any other columns if required. Yes, you're absolutely right. But the point is those two columns that is actual result and final result or status will only be added when you start the execution. This is again a very common misunderstanding that people think all the columns are written when you are writing the test case. No, if you pick up any tool, you would observe that any test management tool, you would observe yourself that when you're writing test cases, you see the last column as expected result. And when you start the executions, then you automatically see a new column added plus the status of the execution, right? So that's the reason I have not included the other two columns that is final status of the test and the actual result, right? So I hope this gives you all that understanding what you really needed to write some test cases. So go on, try, take up some sample applications which are live and start writing some test cases and review yourself that are you able to write some good test cases or not. If you're getting stuck, I'm here, just drop it on the command and I'll be happy to respond back to you. So that's all from this particular tutorial team. Should you have anything else, feel free to comment below. I'm always there to address your queries and answer them well. Till then, keep learning, keep exploring, keep understanding the context. Thanks for watching the video team and happy learning.